Welcome to another episode of the Hut Mind TV. I'm Sakina Samuda, your host, and I am here with special guest, Mr. Michael Sachs. Hello, Michael. Hello, Sakina. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Okay, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. What is it you want to know? I want to know everything. I know that you're in the movie business. And you have an accent. I know you're in Jamaica. You're from Jamaica. <laughs> what part of Jamaica are you from? I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. And um, I'm a screenwriter slash actor. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing this since 2005, you know, um, when me and Tehut Mine began the whole journey. You know, so here I, here I am on um, 2016, and I'm still doing it. Wow, that's awesome. That's a long time. So, I know you've done a couple of films. Can you tell me about each of them? Well, the first film we did was Foreign. Then we did Bashment. I did um, The Roman Lion, Running Time. Then I went and did a stage play called Mana Carry Belly. Mm -hmm. Then I did Jamaican Mafia. Is Jamaican Mafia your latest? Yeah, that's my latest piece. Okay, so tell me about the casting process and w working behind the scenes. Well, the, the casting process, I enjoy it because to see people just walk in a room and become the character that you wrote, it's, um, it's always miraculous to me, you know, and I've been through the process a lot of times, you know, because, like, for example, my last film, Jamaican Mafia, I wrote a character... Um, that I named John Crow. And this guy walked in the building and he looked just like a John Crow. <laughs> so I say, that is John Crow. <laughs> you know, so it's always, you know, it's always good to see people just fall into certain characters. You know, sometimes you wonder if it was preordained. Okay, so... So you enjoy making movies, and you said you're an actor and a writer. Um, you wear a, a lot of hats. Do you act in all your movies? Um, actually, when you say wear a lot of hats, that describes me well, you know, because that's how I started out, you know, trying to do everything and stuff like that. But the more I go on, I try to, you know, um, get rid of those hats because it's movie making is a is a teamwork process you know and i and i like to stick to what i know best you know so hopefully i meet some wonderful people along the way that could fill all of these hats so i don't have to go up my way to fill those other hats you know because what i mainly focus on is writing and acting and um want to leave the rest to other people okay so tell me what's the mo the hardest part of being in a movie industry the hardest part I would say getting distribution and it's very rare you find distribution outlets that cater to to like black films per se you know recently an agent of mine went to Warner Brothers and they told him that they're looking for only white films, mm -hmm. you know, which was a dagger to my heart. But, hey, I already know how this world is set up, you know. Okay. Can you tell me more about this, your latest film, Jamaica Mafia? How, what inspired you to write that? Actually, um... That's really a real life inspiration because I've been around a lot of gangsters in the past and I was just inspired to do a film that would please the audience that was was longing for a movie like Shutters. So I just 
took pen to paper and decided I'm going to do a, a, a movie to fill that void because that void have been open for a long time because Shutters came out like in 2000, yeah. right when it was making a transition from cassettes to DVD. And everybody kept saying, yo, we can't wait for Shutters Part 2. And it never happened. So, you know, I just decided I'm just going to fill that open gap. Okay, so how long did it take you to make Jamaica Mafia? Filming took us like four months. Um, the screenplay took me like a year and a little bit of change. And um, the casting process was like a month and rehearsal three months. Okay, um, I'm aware of some negativity that was floating around Jamaican Mafia. I mean, the bootleg part. How does that happen? How did that happen? And what did you do? And how do you fix something like that? Um, we tried to stay away from the DVD release. You know, we wanted to do an online premiere where the whole world could get to see it instantly. And um, apparently these guys have softwares where they could record the film from the internet. And right now it's like it's bootlegged all over the world because because of the, the internet streaming. You know, um, I haven't put, put it on original DVDs as yet. And uh, the bootlegs are all over the world because the director, he got a phone call from Austria and someone was telling him that it was all over the street. So, you know, it's wow. all over the place, you know. But, I mean, I'm not worried about that because not everybody support bootlegging right. and um, the type of audience that I'm trying to reach you know um, these people don't even really they're, they're not even exposed to bootlegs so we're aiming to hit the stores like Target, Barnes and Nobles and these major outlets like Walmart you know where people go and buy the original thing you know but um, it's sad to say, but our core audience, you know, most of them is brought up on the whole bootleg culture, so they can't help it. But um, I'm living in, in the hood still, so when I'm walking on the street and I see people sell it, you know, I would take the DVDs away from them, and sometimes it leads to a physical altercation, and... I just got to defend what's mine because I put in a lot of work in it mm -hmm. and I'm not going to walk by somebody selling my movie on the streets. Do you mind giving us a follow-up on what happened? Because I saw a video with you in a store with the, the, the guys that were selling your DVD. What's the follow-up of that? And I saw you there with your paperwork, so tell me more yeah. about that. Um, right now, I'm about to hit the civil court with it. Um, we're about to sue the store, you know, for, for infringing my copyrights because they thought it was a Jamaican-made film, but it, the, the movie is copywritten with the Library of Congress, so I guess they didn't know that. They think it was some Shibata stage play or something like that. But um, that a lot of people online is wondering why... I went and took out all my movies from these guys' stores. But they don't understand, you know, the hard work behind everything that we do. And they don't really understand that, you know, um, when you become a filmmaker and you're producing your work, you expect to, to, to get paid. Now, these guys, are, are some of them, they buy films from us, um... At, at a wholesale price and then when they get the film like they will buy like 10 or 15 and then you never get another phone call from them because they start copying the mm -hmm. film you know so these guys definitely have to pay for what they're doing and um, for all my fans who are wondering why we took out the movies from these guys stores without calling the cops these guys told us they, they was going to call the cops, but they didn't. This guy went on the phone and started speaking in African, so I guess he was 
calling his obia man or he was trying to call his friends to come jump us yeah. but once i saw that i just took all the movies and left right. you know because they wasn't giving me a hassle because they know it was my film right. okay well i hope everything works out with that i want to know it's now 2016 January 3rd, 2016. What are your plans for this year? And what's your goal? This year, I really want to start writing Jamaican Mafia Part 2 because the request is overwhelming. Like, I know that's when I'm really going to make some money. You know, because I'm thinking about a, a worldwide theatrical release you know because the bootlegging it's a blessing and a curse because yeah. right now I, I'm suffering in a sense because um, I haven't put out, put out my, my DVDs yet and these guys are selling on the street but everybody worldwide is asking for part two so when we do do part two now maybe we could have a giant distribution company behind it that opens the movie worldwide in a theater mm -hmm. so i'm getting a lot of phone calls from different people who want to invest in part two so i think that's going to be a big thing that's going to go down for 2016. okay that's great where do you see yourself five years from now five years from now i see myself on a lake in a in a boat fishing, mm -hmm. and having fun with my family. <laughs> oh, nice. That sounds really good. <laughs> okay. Well, folks, this is Michael Fox, and I'm Sakina Samuda, and thanks for watching another episode of Tihut Mind TV. Peace.